Frankie, there's a new Mac on the street. Cracker Barrel Macaroni and Cheese, well known in the cheese industry for many years. We're gonna check it out today on Box Mac. I get confused between the brand and the store. Yeah, so I, this is actually something that I'm very confused about too. There is a restaurant called the Cracker Barrel Restaurant, and I have no idea if it's related to this brand. Is there a retail store called Cracker Barrel? Crate and Barrel. That's what it is, yes. <laughs> so you've got Crate and Barrel. Crate and Barrel. Retail store, irrelevant. Expensive home goods. You can find it in malls everywhere. You've got Cracker Barrel Restaurant. Which I've never been to. There's one in Connecticut. What do they serve? Food. The words Cracker Barrel do make me hungry, make me want to go have some crackers. You want to have a barrel of crackers. <laughs> yeah, right. Even though the idea of a barrel of crackers is not that appetizing. And then we have a brand of cheese called Cracker Barrel? Yeah, that's a, a store brand of cheese that you can buy. That is owned by Kraft. It is owned by Kraft. Okay. Which, Frankie, you know what that makes this? What? A Kraft macaroni and cheese. This is a Kraft Mac that is not Kraft branded. It's like how Aquafina is owned by Coca-Cola. Yeah, I guess so. Actually, if you look at the supermarket, you'll see Cracker Barrel cheese and Kraft cheese. The whole idea is to own what should look like the competition. But it's interesting that they would put out a mac and cheese under a brand that doesn't have any macaroni and cheese associated with it, Cracker Barrel, as opposed to expanding the Kraft line. Maybe they want to go for a completely distinctive flavor. And I think that's probably why we're here. This is a premium macaroni and cheese. This is actually priced above all of the other deluxe offering the Kraft has at $3.49 a box retail price. No artificial flavors. Right. That's kind of a bold statement for a macaroni and cheese that has a cheese packet. Because what are they doing? Chipping us real cheese? Well, let's take a look. <laughs> you can't lean to them. The cheese sauce in this one contains cheddar cheese as basically the only ingredient. That's kind of incredible. $10? No, three forty nine. If I go to the Hall of Max and pull this random bean, this is Kraft Bold. There's no actual cheese in this. They call it cheese sauce. The top three ingredients are milk, whey, and whey protein concentrate. Right. This one has basically just cheese. That's a big change. Do people like the Cracker Barrel cheese? This is it a highly rated cheese? Nowadays, lots of supermarkets will sell like really high end cheese, like a Cabot uh, aged oak cheddar. It's a wonderful cheese. They do pre-sliced cheese. So if you were gonna have a, like an event, you wanted to have some, some cheddar that was pre-sliced, you just open a little package and, and you can serve it. They also do like the blocks and you can cut up pieces. We've seen this sort of branding before where they're really going for big blocks of cheese that have been sliced. And in this case, many blocks. Do they have different different pictures on each of these? Uh, no. They're all the same. All the same imagery. And there's a story on the back. We've been doing things differently for over 60 years. Our unique aging process gives our cheese a delicious, bold sharpness. All right. Today we offer that same distinctive flavor in our rich mac and cheese, smooth, creamy, and full of flavor. One bite will keep you coming back for more. That's what they all say. I'm actually a little bit excited about these because I really dig a real cheese flavor. We're gonna try two of these, Frankie. The most orange one is the one that jumps out to me. Sharp cheddar, cheddar Harvati, and a sharp white. Now let me tell you, in the store, they had the three in a very nice display. This one was not selling at all. And I think it's because of the term Harvati Harv and nobody knows what it means. They don't know what they're getting with that. They have no idea. I don't either. Should we try it then? All right, I'm cool with these. Okay. One thing that I want to point out that I actually really like, the box is embossed. So if you run your finger over the word Cracker Barrel, oh. it's actually been press imprinted. Oh. This is a fancy printed box. We don't talk about the printing of boxes much. This box has a tremendous number of colors. It's got CMYK, which is common. And then plus two, we've got a purple, and this green. So it's a six color process to print this box. Wow. I don't want to put all my dollars toward the printing of the box though. I'm yeah. all about the Mac. It reminds me of the plating of dishes. Do you really yeah. care about the plating? I of the care dish? a little bit. Why? I don't know, because I like my food to look good if you're just gonna put it in a glob. But even though I'd eat the glob. We'll put this one in the big pot. You have your certified marker. I need a shappy. I need a shappy. I need a shappy. I need a shappy. You have one. Havarti. Havarti. Havarti, Havarti. Havarti. Hava, open up that other one there, Frankie. But I don't want to ruin this beautiful box. Okay. It was so well printed. I understand. the embossed text. I get your concerns. You can actually feel the embossing on the back too. Like if you have autism and you need to kind of like calm down. Crap, I probably just offended so much of our audience. Yeah, you did. Because they're either autistic or they have autistic children because they feed them so much mac and cheese. I remember um, the, the year would have been 2001. Yep. We made a cartoon together. Yep and I wanted to pr uh, produce a nice VHS of it. I don't remember how you did it, but you got the title to be embossed on the VHS. They only made, I think, three. Yeah. Two right. or three. One of them went to Nina. 
Because yep. it was my Christmas gift to her. Yes, yep. and I kept one for myself. I had a printer called an Alps printer. It was a wax sublimation printer. And it had a gold cartridge, and you could have it layer up the wax uh, as deep as you wanted. It would keep applying it. And that's what made the, um, the, the embossedness. I missed that printer. It was a cool piece of technology. Call me a hipster. Yeah. Every now and then I have this flight of fancy where I want to release select episodes of Box Mac on VHS. Really? On the Halloween episode, we used a VHS filter. Yes. Then I thought, well, what would happen if I took the filter away and just released the episode on VHS? Yeah. Wouldn't that be amusing? That would be fun. Then I thought, wouldn't it be amusing to produce an entire VHS tape? Because VHS tapes are produced very differently from DVDs, Blu-ray, and certainly from That's Netflix. right. You have a promo at the start, right. and then the whole, the episodes, and then... And at the very end, and at the very beginning, you hear that little... Yes. Before they have the tape labeled, if they need to know what tape it is to get the right label on it, that's just a code that they can read off, and then they know which tape it is. Because there's no other unique way to figure out what tape it is. It's just DTMF is the, the technology. It's just the same as phones. I think I actually put it on one thing we did because really? I was just such a nerd back then. <laughs> so then I'm going like, there's there's a lot of printing companies out there that'll print all kinds of media for you. Oh yeah. I can't find anybody. Really? Unlike vinyl, which has made a real resurgence, that technology has not. I predict that it will. Remember that Disney logo and this Disney theme at that time? Yeah. It was like that. <laughs> Yes. Can you cut in right here, a, a, like a crappy VHS copy of that, please? VHS Max. Yeah. <laughs> There's still cassette duplicating houses, and they're actually yeah. coming back in popularity too, because people will like the vinyl thing, people want to release on cassettes. I think what, what appeals to me about it, it's kind of a mind if anybody comes across that. Of one like, of them? Like, yeah. When did these start? Are these the best episodes? You know, and it has to be selected yeah. by some company that sure. didn't necessarily pick the best one. That's like the, the match game compilations. Some poor intern decided, ah, this one and this one and this one. <laughs> I had lots of tapes like that as a kid. Yeah. Like you get three. You get three random episodes of the show. Yeah. Two maybe, and then a bonus episode? Yeah. That's really just another episode. Two episodes plus bonus episode. They would heavily advertise one of the three episodes. Yes, on the like Banana Caper. Like, uh, you yeah. know, if you're, I'm thinking Tailspin, to be honest with you. Boom, 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 it. Boom, 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 Spin it again. Yeah, spin it again. Do you remember the the part, like the breakdown? Like, you can spin it in a minute. It was pretty good. Spin it, let's get it, very good. When you're ready, you can spin it in a minute. When you spin it, spin it, spin it. I wonder if they wanted to to continue that theme of like, we're going to take some Disney character types and we're gonna kind of reuse them in different situations. Maybe the animals of the Robin Hood kingdom and uh, make them NASCAR drivers or something. <laughs> so Frankie, I don't want to get us off this fascinating topic, but we're cooking Mac. Right, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> we're almost ready. I got no butter to cut, no milk to measure, so. Poetry. <laughs> no butter to cut, no milk to measure. The mac and cheese is just my pleasure. Spin it in a minute. <laughs> Ha ha ha, <laughs> tailspin. Dude, do you still have the bongos in your house? I, I need someone to play them while I give a beat poetry. Hey, Macaroni uh, and cheese, my wife salt. Has some bongos. Nice. Why do, why do females have bongos? I think Nina wanted to play an instrument and was like, those look like the easiest. <laughs> <laughs> I gravitated towards percussion instruments because of the ease of use. Yeah. It's like in Mr. Holland's opus when, yeah. when, he, when Terrence Howard needs to graduate and needs a few extra credits. Well, given the time constraints, how do drums strike you? Well, given the time constraints, how do drums strike you? Drum. The drums. Whatever happened to him? Is he still with us? Dreyfus is old. Is he 99? <laughs> Songwriter, composer, John Williams, uh -huh. 83 years old. Holy crap, he's gonna be dead soon. The poor guy, he's, I looked up his net worth, he's worth $100 million, Yeah. and he's making, they're like, we're gonna make a Star Wars movie every year. He's like, <laughs> oh, I got enough money. <laughs> You've already composed about seven hours of it total. Like, we could probably do this with an app yeah. or something. <laughs> the poor guy, he's all skinny, and he's like, oh, I was watching it, and it was good, and so uh, Ray was a girl, and, and Finn was fun. Fun, so I wrote this song. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, big, plump noodle. Frankie, get the cheese in there, man. A minute, I'm, he's taking a shot. I can't doodle a noodle. You having some cheese trouble? It's just, it's, it's, it's like a hard poo. Oh, dear. Uh, and 
then the poor cheese sauce has to shake it out, and, <laughs> and then it poops a little too much, and it's back to where it started. Nobody likes to talk about poop. There's an entire- You're still squeezing? Yeah, I'm still squeezing. The cheese is pretty, like, buttery, I have to say. The reason it took so long to squeeze out, I think, is because this is actual cheese. That looks pretty well mooshed. You gotta cush the butter and moosh the mac. Yeah, moosh it a little. Here's a fork for you. I gotta tell you, John. This looks pretty good. This looks awesome. This is the Sharp Cheddar Cracker Barrel Macaroni and Cheese. It's really, really yeah, good. Yeah, it's good. It, it, it's, it tastes like real cheese. Yeah. Like real cheese. It's Velveeta Plus. I don't think this would reheat. No, I don't think it would reheat well at all. But most Macs don't, to be honest. Oh, it's very good though, isn't it? Mm. You don't encounter that very often. Yeah. That complete satisfaction. Well, it, it actually tastes to me like, like I've made a, a roux with a lot of cheese in it. They're really good noodles. They have a, a textured ridging on them that's really helping to keep the cheese in. Very good. One of the mm. highest deluxes of all time. Yeah. I think so. Cheddar, Cheddar Havari. Havari, Havari, Havari. 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 However you say it. it. Tastes very similar to the other one to me. It tastes like a different cheese. It does actually have that, that <laughs> little bit of tang in it that's of that other type of cheese. Because I've had that cheese. It's a little bit stronger. It's very good too. Really so great pasta. Can people go down to their local crate and barrel and grab a box of this? No. I'm concerned that it might go away. Because I don't know if enough people are going to try it. Should we invest in it? I mean, I already own shares in the Kraft Corporation, so. It's really good. It's an folks. awesome Mac. Yeah. It's real cheese. I, I highly recommend it. I think this is Kraft's best deluxe by far. Right. The Velveetas are in line with this, but this takes it an extra step. Yes. I just found my new favorite deluxe Mac. It's pretty good, man. You'll like the way you Mac. So cheesy! <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, it was all about the truffle oil when we opened a fan package and found Roland Mushroom Max. And if you like Fancy Max, go back and watch our Fancy Pants show featuring Nina. Au revoir, macaroons. Uh -huh.